Okay, students, let's keep going. So um, this video is going to be about objects on inclined planes, on, on slanted surfaces. Now I know that this uh, uh, thing says we're starting out with normal forces, but anyway, I wanted to tell you that's where it's going to lead to. So, all right, let's talk about normal forces now to get things started. Uh, so the word normal means perpendicular. Now, perpendicular, uh, you know, means that it's at 90 degrees. So for example, right now, this pen is perpendicular to the book. And here it's not perpendicular, here it's not perpendicular. But um, the word normal means perpendicular twice over. So uh, it, not only do you have to be perpendicular this way, but it also has to be perpendicular the other way. So, so it's perpendicular in two different dimensions. So that, that's what the word normal means to a physicist. Um, now, uh, the, um, the book uh, has a symbol um, called N with a you know, vector sign over it, which means uh, a force perpendicular or normal to a plane, uh, such as the surface of the book. Um, but I often use, or I tend to like to use uh, F with a perpendicular symbol there. So, so you know that this upside down T means perpendicular. All right, so let's go on and talk about some examples of normal forces. So in my first example, I've got a man who's standing on flat ground and uh, his weight, uh, which I've labeled here F sub G, is straight down and the ground is pushing up on him. And um, so that's the normal force. The ground pushing up on him is at 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to the ground itself. and um, the normal force, its job is to keep the guy from falling down, you know, to the center of the earth. It's, we also call it the support force. Um, yeah, now, since the two forces cancel, the net force is going to be zero, right? The guy is in equilibrium. Uh, yeah, okay, so in this case, the normal force is the support force. You know, what if the ground is not level? What if it's tilted? Uh, in that case, the normal force, which is, remember, it's got to be perpendicular to the ground. It's pointing up in a funny direction, right? It, the normal force is pointing this way, but gravity is pointing down this way. And if you added these two vectors, they would not add up to zero. Um, they would actually wind up adding to, up to a, a vector that's this way, right? Okay, so what prevents him from uh, from falling, from you know, sliding down the hill, as as this force would do? Uh, well, it's friction. So, um, in, in for this, if he's standing still, if he's in equilibrium, not accelerating, there must be a force to cancel uh, the downward or the downhill force and uh, so that force would be this way. Free body diagram. You have the weight of the guy, you have the normal force coming from the, the, the hill and you've got friction and these three vectors added up come out to zero net force. Yeah, okay, so, so let's, um, let's do a typical homework quiz problem. Uh, this 50 kilogram man is standing on a totally frictionless slope of angle 10 degrees. What is his acceleration going to be? So he's going to accelerate downward because there is no friction. Right? He's like on an icy surface or something. Okay, so uh, first step, 
draw the free body diagram. Now remember, I may ask you to do that on the test. It's, even if I don't ask you, it's still a good idea to draw the free body diagram. So this dot, that represents the guy. And down here, that's his weight, the downward force. And then there, here's the normal force from the, from the surface. Okay, so the uh, normal force uh, here, I'm calling it capital N like the book. Um, and it's only canceling part of his weight. Um, it, the Only the part of the uh, gravity force um, that is perpendicular to the slope gets canceled out by the normal force. So, yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty weird, and, um, but uh, uh, here's the thing. You need to, uh, to, to work these problems, you need to decompose the gravity vector, the weight vector, into a part down here. Here, I've drawn it out. This part here, which is perpendicular to the slope, to the, the plane that the guy is standing on, and a part that, that is parallel. So his weight, here it is, his weight, which is this downward vector, is getting decomposed into a part that is perpendicular to the surface and parallel to the surface. So if you added these two blue vectors, you'd get the, uh, the orange vector. Okay, now the angle uh, 10 degrees, let's, let's, let's look at the angle here. You see, here, this is 10 degrees. And, um, you know, this is a, a geometry thing. That 10 degrees means that this angle here is going to be 10 degrees. Um, I, I haven't taken geometry in ages, so I, I, I don't know exactly the steps to prove it, but it, it's a pretty straightforward process. Anyhow, um, the, uh, the uh, perpendicular part here is the adjacent, uh, the parallel part here is the opposite and then the original weight is the hypotenuse. Uh, I forgot to mention that I'm uh, using the label, um, so for example, this means parallel, and I already said that this means perpendicular. Upside down T is perpendicular to parallel lines, that's parallel. So this is the parallel part of the weight, this is the perpendicular part of the weight. Um, yeah, okay, so the, uh, okay, we're, let's go back to what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to find out how quickly the man is going to slide down the hill, how much he's going to accelerate down that hill. So the thing that makes him accelerate is, is the parallel part. By trigonometry, you've got that the sine of this angle is, is the parallel part over the hypotenuse, the, um, his overall weight. And uh, yeah, okay, so now keep going. Uh, so we're gonna solve for the parallel part. We get the F sub G parallel, the parallel part of the weight is F sub G, the weight, times the sine of theta. Um, okay. Now, what about the acceleration, right? That, after all, that's what we want. We want to know how quickly he accelerates down the hill. So by Newton's second law, um, this is the net force, right? The, the uh, perpendicular part of the uh, weight got canceled out by the normal force. So this is the net force here. Uh, so Newton's second law of force over mass gives you acceleration. So F sub G times the sine of theta divided by M. But F sub B, the weight, is just Mg. And guess what? We have canceling of the masses. So the acceleration is going to be 
g sine of theta. And plugging in the numbers, 9.8 and uh, the sine of 10 degrees, put that in your calculator. Don't forget, degrees mode, not radians. And you get your answer, 1.7 meters per second squared. Um, okay, now, uh, a follow-on question, um, and it is going to become important when we start involving friction. Um, what is the normal force, right? So if I, let's go back to my diagram, um, right? We, wh what is this part right here? What is this force? The force of the hill pushing up on the guy's feet. So the normal force to get that, let's see, find this again. Uh, what is the normal force? So what is what does his feet think his uh, his weight is going to be? And um, so going back to where we broke things down, it's we're we're asking what is the length of this vector here? And um, okay, so. Uh, we have um, hypotenuse adjacent. Oh, sine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, um, I'm sorry, cosine of theta. So, yes, adjacent over hypotenuse. So, it's the cosine. And, yeah, the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Solve for the, uh, the normal force. And you get Fg cosine theta. You plug in the numbers, you get the answer, 482.6 newtons. Uh, yeah, and according to this, the steeper the slope is, the less force will be on your feet. Um, until finally, I mean, let's suppose that the slope is just, has no slope, it's just flat. Then all of your you're going to feel full weight, right? It's like standing on ice. You're, if you if you weigh 100 pounds, you're still going to feel like you weigh 100 pounds. But what I'm saying now is that let's say the ice starts to tilt. The more it's tilted, the less weight is on your feet until finally when you're totally, let's say it's just an ice cliff, right? Now there's no weight at all on your feet. It's as if you're weightless. Of course, you're about to die, but you know... You can do a little physics on your way down. So um, I'm, I'm talking about this because it kind of leads to some shortcuts, uh, just justifying some shortcuts um, later on. Uh, yeah, this one down here, uh, shortcut for picking the right trig function. Um, I'm going to back up, though, and um, talk about the shortcut that the book talks about um, very often in this type of problem, it's easier to figure things out if instead of having your coordinate system be, you know, uh, the Y being straight up and X going, you know, horizontally, it, it becomes easier to do the problem if you tilt the coordinate system so that X is parallel the x-axis is parallel to the hill, and the y-axis is, is normal to the hill. Um, so you, if you look in the book, you're going to see the book doing that in the examples. Um, okay, so now, getting back to what I was alluding to with the, the ice cliff, all right? Um, what, yeah, so... Um, what I would, with the ice cliff, all right, when the ice was flat and you're full weight, that's called the limiting case. The limiting case when the angle theta is zero is that you feel the full weight on your feet. The other limiting case is when it's vertical and there you get zero weight on your feet. So those are the two limits. No weight at all on your feet or full weight on your feet. Uh, okay. So this method is sort of telling you to think about problems this way. 
right? These, these tilted problems and, and the ones where you have the spring or a rope or something at funny angles, they're, they're, the answer is always going to be um, a sine or a cosine, or maybe you're doing the inverse sine or the inverse cosine. So it would be nice to just be able to know what the answer is without having to do Sokotoa. And I mean, it, you know, I can kind of remember Sokotoa, but I make mistakes. Um, now, an easier way to figure things out, potentially, uh, has to do with the shape of the sine curve and the cosine curve, right? So at zero degrees, the sine is zero. At 90 degrees, it's a maximum. That's the way the sine behaves. Now the cosine behaves a little differently, right? At zero degrees, the cosine is one. And at 90 degrees, it's zero. So if you have a problem and you know the limiting cases are, okay, um, at zero degrees, I know that um, I have zero force. Oh my God, that means it must be a sine function. Or, or let's say that, um, like on the case of the ice, you know, when the ice is totally flat, I know that when the tilt of the ice is zero degrees, uh, I have full weight. Oh man, yeah, okay, that means it must be a cosine function. And not only that, but when the ice is at 90 degrees, you have no weight, you're weightless, you're falling. Uh, yeah, okay, so that just confirms, yes, it's cosine function for that one. So this, this is a shortcut that can be, you know, very helpful. Um, okay. So basically that's what I'm saying right here. The sine of zero, theta is zero when theta is zero. And, and that's the clue. Okay, so uh, let's do a few examples to show how this trick works. Um, so example, Dr. H, oh, that's me. Yeah, he is pulling on, oh man, I'm so handsome here. Dr. H is pulling on the rock. Why am I doing that? Well, anyway, the tension on the rope is T, right? So I'm pulling on this rope with a pull of T uh, newtons in this direction at angle theta. What are the X and Y components of T? Okay, so the question is, what are the X and Y components? All right. Well, uh, for TX, the answer is going to be either T sine theta or T cosine theta. Right? I mean, you, when you start doing a lot of these problems, you're going to start to see a pattern. It's either T sine theta or T cosine theta, and it's going to be which one? Well, if the angle is zero, right? Let's say that it's this way, right? Well, in that case, uh, you're going to have either that the uh, it's either going to be t or it's going to be zero. Well, if I'm pulling to the side, um, no, tx does not go to zero. No, it's it's just the full t. So that means the cosine of theta is the right choice because the cosine of zero is one. And, and all right, so if I picked sine, well, the, the sine of zero is zero, which is, you know, the, the wrong way. Okay, so uh, yeah, and then ty, yeah, well, t if, if, uh, if cosine was for tx, then uh, for ty, it's gonna be the sine. Um, okay, so I would like you to take a look at pages 133 and 134 of the textbook uh, at these examples. And then um, also uh, you can go back to page, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure, 7-3, that doesn't make sense. Um, okay. Yet another example um, well actually this is very similar to the guy on the ice uh, except now I'm actually using the trick that the book 
recommends the trick of turning the coordinate system. So to figure out his acceleration, right? His, his brakes are broken. Ah, and he's going faster, faster, faster. What is his acceleration? So to figure that out, one way to do it is to make the uh, coordinate system be like this, where you're going this way with the y-axis and this way with the x-axis. Um, okay, so the acceleration is going to be given by the x component of his weight. So, so here is his weight. Um, here, let's clear this. So his, here's his weight and I, I realize I, I really should write F sub sub G but anyway uh, I'm gonna, anyway this is his weight and um, the uh, the Y component of his weight doesn't do anything to accelerate him it's it's all about the X component so we want to know what's the X component here so it's going to be the weight times the sine of theta or the weight of the and times the cosine of theta which one well, does his uh, acceleration or, or does his forward push go to zero as the angle go to zero goes to zero? Right now, if the angle goes to zero, does he is he going to accelerate? No. Oh, his acceleration is going to be zero. So that means the forward force, the, the x component of his weight, is going to be zero. Okay. So which trig function? goes to zero. The sine or the cosine? It's the sine. Okay, so the answer's got to be this one here. The weight times the sine of, uh, the weight times the sine of theta. This one here. All right. All right. And, and so here we are. The force is the weight times the sine of theta, so the acceleration is going to be mg sine of theta uh, divided by the mass. The masses cancel, and you get g sine theta. Okay.